okay students in the previous class we discussed we were discussing about the structure of the earth or the earth structure on which we discussed the interior structure of the earth where we discussed about the crust the characteristics of the crust mantle and core and also we studied the uh, the features of the crust what are the uh, important characteristics of the crust division of the crust their density and thickness also we discussed about the mantle layer classification of mantle layer and uh, the density thickness etc accordingly for the core as we have studied in the previous classes okay we'll just do a brief uh, summary of the previous class whatever we have done then we'll proceed to the next topic that is so we were we discussed about the crust mental core the classification of the earth interior so earth interior is classified into three major groups so that is the first one is crust the second one is your mental and the third the innermost part is core okay so this can be understood in this way also i have taken a small chunk of the earth interior and made in this way okay so this is the first part crust second part mantle and core okay so on which we discussed that the crust there are two type of crust continental crust and oceanic crust so this is oceanic crust the thickness of oceanic crust is less and it is more dense oceanic crust is more dense compared to the continental crust this is continental crust okay now this crust is further studied in this way this is upper crust so upper crust and lower crust so there is a transitional zone in between the crust and the mantle so which about which i have already discussed in the previous class so this transitional zone is that particular uh, separation zone on which uh, from where the velocity of the p waves or the, these are the earthquake waves p waves s waves or l waves changes okay so this a uh, transitional zone is known as mohovic mohorovesic vesic discontinuity so about which i have discussed in the previous classes that is it is based on the uh, uh, seismologist crossin seismologist whose name was andriza mohorovic which he identified in the year 1909 okay so below that we have mental okay so about the thickness of the crust have we discussed that it is about uh, the thickness generally it differs in different books Uh, you can refer it as thirty-three kilometer, and the thickness of the mantle is generally two twenty-nine hundred kilometer. Okay, then the density of the mantle is quite higher compared to the density of the crust. As you move inside, the density of the crust increases. Generally, it uh, ranges between the three uh, hundred. Sorry, not three hundred. the density of the mantle is 3 to 5 uh, cm cube okay so this is the density of the mantle and accordingly mantle is also divided into two part that is upper mantle and lower mantle then further there is one more transition zone in between the crust in between the mantle and the core so this transition zone is also known as gutenberg's discontinuity so gutenberg's discontinuity this was this name discontinuity was named after the german geophysicist benno gutenberg okay so on his name this discontinuity was named so again further this core is divided into two part outer core and inner core so outer core is semi liquid and inner core is solid or totally it is in solid state so so this were the topics that we discussed in the previous classes so today 
in today's topic we'll be discussing about the evidences regarding the internal structure of the earth now what are the evidences that uh, that give some idea about the internal structure of the earth so we'll be discussing about it so those evidences can be can be studied from the earthquake waves okay now earthquakes you know uh, produce three types of waves they are termed as p waves okay so that means what are the evidences that uh, through which we can understand the internal structure of the earth first one is studying earthquake studying the nature of of earthquake waves of earthquake waves okay so this is the first point studying the nature of the earthquake waves now earthquake waves are classified into three categories there are three types of earthquake waves now what are earthquake waves so whenever earthquake take place in any regions of the world maybe here 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 wherever wherever earthquake take places waves are generated from here so there are three types of waves that generates in different that moves in different directions in the internal structure of the earth so that is p waves which is also known as primary waves okay p waves then we have s waves which is known as secondary waves then lastly we have that is l waves or love waves this name was kept based on the uh, a seismologist his name was love so love waves or it is also known as surface wave okay so let me discuss in short about all these waves there is primary waves or p waves okay this is also known as longitudinal waves so remember this p waves or primary waves are also known as longitudinal waves okay now longitudinal waves or the primary waves are the fastest waves okay they are the fastest wave they can travel through all the medium so we discussed about the three basic medium that is uh, on the in, in, in the internal structure of the earth okay so what uh, we had solid liquid or there are gases inside as well okay so whenever a wave generates here so p waves so for example this is p waves so p waves can travel through the solid as well as you have mentioned here it can travel through the liquid and can penetrate the solid again and can reach here that means it is passing through all the uh, medium okay so p waves and it is the fastest wave okay so it can travel through all the medium and it is the fastest wave now you see here p waves or the longitudinal waves travels in a straight line and the speed is maximum that is up to 12 km per second that means in one second it can travel up to 12 km okay this is the uh, maximum speed of a p waves or sometimes it can also reach more than that so this waves can travel through solid as well as liquid part of the interior of the earth okay so as i already told you the p waves can travel through all the medium it can travel through solid as well as liquid medium okay now there are some waves that do not penetrates the liquid medium that that cannot uh, go through the liquid medium thereby they bifurcate thereby they change its direction so such type of waves are s waves and l waves so we'll be discussing about it in short now s waves hope you have understood about primary waves primary waves 
Generally, you can see the movement of P waves in this way in the seismograph. Longitudinal waves will be look will be seen in this way. This is how it is uh, drawn in a seismograph. Now you see the second one is the secondary waves of the uh, S wave. Now S waves or it is also known as transverse transverse wave. These waves are slower than the P waves. This is due to the their zigzag wave motion. Now S waves do not move in a straight path. They move in a zigzag path like this, just like a snake. It moves like a snake, okay? In a zigzag motion. Like in case of P waves, it moves in this path, straight, in the same path, straight path. But in case of S waves, it moves in this way. In this part okay this is how the s wave moves and the speed of the s wave is comparatively slower than the p waves okay one more important thing about s wave is s wave can penetrate only through the solid part it can travel only through the solid part or the solid medium say for example this is the uh, mental part say this is the mental part which is in liquid state and this is a solid part so wherever there is earthquake the s wave will move in this direction up to this this gets absorbed in the liquid portion okay this wave gets absorbed in the liquid portion or may it may get bifurcated in other direction okay so this is how the liquid uh, the s waves get absorbed so that in this part of the world, say for example, in this region, we do not feel the impact of S waves here. Whereas P waves can penetrate through this, we can feel the impact of the uh, P waves in this part of the world. But S wave, the impact of S wave is not felt in this or the antipodal location of the S waves. Okay, so it gets absorbed here. So that means P waves, S waves travels only through the solid medium it do not it get absorbed in the liquid mediums clear the speed of the s wave once again i'm repeating it the speed of the s wave is less comparatively less it is near about uh, say eight kilometer five to eight kilometer per second in case of s waves although it is uh, not mentioned in your book okay now next that is the last type of wave that is L wave or love wave. L stands for love. Love is the name of the scientist who discovered this wave that is L waves or the surface wave. That surface wave cannot travel a long distance and are restricted to the surrounding surface region where earthquake occurs. Now very important to note here. Among these two waves, S waves and P waves, S L waves or the surface wave or love wave, okay, love wave or surface wave travels only on the surface of the earth. It travels near the surface of the earth. So as it is traveling near the surface of the earth, it is it, it does not travel for a longer distance, but to some extent, wherever it travels, it causes lots of destructions. And the movement is very slow. The movement of this wave is very slow. So the level of destruction will be very high in case of L waves. Wherever the L waves originates at that place is wherever the L, wave, L waves uh, in, uh, the uh, wherever the path of the L waves uh, uh, reaches there, that particular areas will be severely damaged by the earthquakes. Okay, so very important to note the speed of the L wave is very less, generally less than two to three kilometer per second. Okay, so due to this low speed, okay the destruction rate will be higher in case of L waves. 
and it do not it also do not passes it, it, it do not passes through the liquid medium it travels near the surface of the earth only in the solid medium then it causes a lot of destructions okay so this is all about the p waves s waves and l waves now by this we can get some evidences that there is some liquid below the interior of the earth studying the nature of p waves studying the nature of s wave studying the nature of the l waves because the velocity of the p waves s waves and l waves changes in particular uh, position in particular reaching a particular uh, distance the velocity of the p waves or the s waves changes here in case of this the s wave is traveling only through the solid medium but in the liquid medium it is getting absorbed that means something is there which is liquid inside okay which is liquid inside due to which the s wave cannot travel through this okay so s wave p wave is there it can travel through all the medium but it is it it gets it is also it is also diverted from its original place s p waves also get diverted from its original place okay so there is some layers or there is some variation in the interior of the uh, earth due to which the earthquake waves are also diverted from its path okay so by this we can understand that the interior of the earth is designed uh, on the basis of crust mantle and core based on the velocity and based on the density of the interior of the earth crust okay now you see all okay all the time of the uh, of an earthquake the earthquake waves spread in all direction and recorded by the seismograph all over the world when the data is compiled it help the scientists or the seismologist to predict about the internal layers of the earth now all this after recording all the movement of the s waves p waves and uh, l waves okay this data is recorded in a seismograph and we can, we can understand the internal structure of the earth through that data okay now this is the first evidence regarding the internal structure of the earth now point number 2 is temperature now we'll be discussing about temperature okay so temperature how temperature uh, plays an important role how temperature is referred as an uh, evidence for understanding the internal structure of the earth here so this is the second point that is temperature first one was evidences uh, the uh, studying the nature of the earthquake waves second one is temperature so how temperature is considered as an evidence for knowing the internal structure of the earth so the interior of the earth is very hot therefore as the depth increases towards the center of the earth from the earth surface there is a rise of temperature by 1 degree per 32 meter of depth now so it is experienced by the miners in the coal mine or maybe in different mining region that as you go deep inside the earth as you go deep inside the earth temperature gradually increases that is every you say if you go at the depth of 32 meter depth temperature will increase by 1 degree celsius this means as you are going inside or towards the interior of the earth the temperature is increasing that means it is increasing so which which uh, which proves that the internal structure if you go uh, deep inside maybe 1000 meter or 2000 meter deep the temperature will fall, further will rise that means there is some at uh, the hottest point in the interior interior part of the earth okay so as the rate as this rate sorry at this rate the temperature at 1 km will be approximately 31 degree celsius that means at, if you go inside at the depth of 1000 meter that is 1 km the temperature will be 
that is uh, the temperature will be 31 degrees Celsius as per the uh, the previous rate as per that uh, particular uh, previous rate at the rate of 32 meter depth temperature increased by 1 degree so as per that rate if you go at the depth of 1 kilometer temperature will ri rise up to approximately 131 degrees Celsius so accordingly at 10 kilometer it will be approximately 312 degrees Celsius the radius of the earth is 6371 kilometer therefore the temperature at the center of the earth will be about 5000 degrees Celsius that means at the center of the earth the temperature that is I'm talking about here the radius is 6371 so here at this point the temperature will be 5000 degrees Celsius okay so minerals such as iron aluminium copper etc found on the earth have much lower melting point than 5000 degrees Celsius hence we can assume that the core is in liquid state okay so the core is in liquid state because there are some minerals like iron gold or maybe uh, copper aluminium all these minerals have lower melting com if I compare with 5000 degrees Celsius at this particular temperature all of these elements all of these minerals will be in molten state so this proves that at the center of the earth all of the things all of these minerals will be in molten state okay so this proves that the center of the earth is in molten state as per the reading of the temperature okay now lastly this is the last evidence regarding there are other more evidences like volcanic eruption and all but through this evidence we'll try to understand the internal structure of the earth that is density okay okay now how density is considered as an evidence of for understanding the internal structure of the earth now you see the average density of the earth is 5.5 that is centimeter per centimeter cube this is the average density of the earth and the density of the crust crustal layer is 2.7 gram gram 2.7 per centimeter cube this is the average density of the uh, this is the density of the crust now if you find out the difference between these two then the difference will be 2.8 2.8 per centimeter cube gram per centimeter cube this will be the uh, difference between these two which means that it is less it is uh, less than the density of the crust so this much which is left over is compensated by the denser materials which is present in the core okay so as it is less than the average density so as this le uh, this loss how much is lost 2.8 uh, gram per centimeter cube is the uh, loss amount of density this density is compensated by the heavy and the denser material at the core okay so obviously if somewhere there will be high density somewhere there will be low density and we find out the average okay now the crust it has only very limited less density and rest other that is 2.8 centimeter uh, per centimeter cube this much amount of density is compensated by the heavier material that is heavier material will be located in the inner part so which we consider as knife this is why we consider as the heavy minerals or the materials are considered as knife layer okay so hope you have understood so density also proves that the int how the internal structure is made up and apart from that as already mentioned that volcanic activities volcanic activities earthquakes are some of the evidences that proves the internal structure of the earth and rest of the topic will be discussing in the next class that is force originating in the interior of the earth okay that will be discussing in the 
नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू